working from home presents many challenges, one of which could include not receiving enough light during the day. This can have adverse effects on your health and well-being. Watch this video to learn how to create your own circadian effective light at home. Having the right kind of light at the right time of day has been shown to improve mood and sleep and decrease seasonal depression. I'm Alison Thayer, a research specialist at Rensselaer's Lighting Research Center. Because of COVID-19, you may be working from home like me. Did you know you can easily improve your home lighting to get the right light at the right time? You have a biological clock in your brain that generates and regulates your daily cycles, such as when you wake up and when you fall asleep. Your biological clock runs slower than your watch, so if you stay in a dark room for many days, you would become delayed. In order to keep your biological clock in sync with your watch, or the 24-hour day, you need to get light at the back of your eyes, and more specifically, you need to get morning and early afternoon light. Light can also make you feel alert, similar to drinking a cup of coffee. Our biological clock is known as a blue sky detector, which is why saturated blue light is recommended. White light can also be used at higher light levels, but it needs to be brighter than what one table lamp generally provides. While blue or bright white light should be used during the day, they should be avoided in the evening and at night because they may disrupt your sleep. To feel alert, such as what you need after lunch, any blue, white, or even red light will do the trick. Red light is recommended during the late afternoon and evening hours because it will not affect your bedtime. If you want to do it yourself, here are a few tips for you to create a personal desktop lamp that emits blue, red, and or white light. You need two main components, a light source and a diffuser. Start with acquiring a light source. You need to make sure it will be bright enough, so look for the lumens on the package. A 10 watt A19 bulb that has at least 760 lumens will work. It could be color changing or have a single color. If it will be a single color, look for 3000K. Next, get a four inch diameter socket that fits this bulb with an E27 or E26 base and a power cord. Then, you will need a way to diffuse the light to avoid direct view of the bright bulb. I found that a piece of office paper works well. For this, you will need two eight and a half by 11 inch pieces. Other useful materials include scissors, tape, and glue. If you purchase a smart bulb, the cost of this project would be about $45. To build the desktop lamp, start with downloading the PDF provided in the video description. Print the template and cut out following the dark lines. Notice that there is a notch in the bottom center to provide an opening for the cord and a semicircle opening with about a three inch depth. I'll mention why this is important in a minute. Once your paper is neatly cut out, place them on a table with the logo facing up. Overlap the pieces up to the light gray guideline. Secure the pieces with glue or tape. If you have a 4 inch diameter socket, the paper will wrap nicely around the base. There should be another slight overlap. Once the paper is wrapped around the socket, secure the overlap with glue or tape to create a cylinder. If you have a color changing light bulb, follow manufacturer instructions for setting it up to be programmed to different colors. This design is a viable solution because, if used as suggested, it delivers light at the eye and provides adequate circadian stimulus while being energy efficient. Keep in mind some safety factors when building and using your device. Follow all of the manufacturer's instructions on using the bulb. Do not fully enclose the bulb. Leave an opening such as what we've done with an open top. Avoid using incandescent light bulbs as they create a lot of heat, which could be a fire hazard with the paper lamp. Plug the desktop lamp into a grounded outlet and make sure the power cord is not a tripping hazard. If you do not feel comfortable working with electric connections, seek help from a qualified electrician. Once your device is ready, set it next to your computer, ideally 18 inches away and up to 8 inches to the side. Direct the semicircle opening towards your eye because the most light is bouncing off the back wall, which increases the amount of light that gets to the eye. To avoid glare, make sure you don't see the light bulb directly. The semicircle opening should not dip below the plane of the top of the bulb. Preferably, it should have a 1.5 inch gap. In the morning, get at least 30 lux or 3 foot candles of saturated blue light at the eye, similar to this saturation. This will help you stay in sync with your watch. Note that your light may not appear this color, especially if it is mixed with surrounding ambient white light. You can also use white light, but you will need more light at the eye than with the blue light. 
If you're using white light, you should have the bulb at full light output. If your desktop lamp is more than an arm's length away from your eyes, it won't be bright enough. If this is the case, make two lamps and place some on either side of your computer or workspace. You can use a setting in the afternoon that provides red light, which may help mitigate effects of post-lunch tiredness and may help you avoid a cup of coffee or another trip to the kitchen. Remember, as much as you want bright light during the day, you want to avoid it in the evening, especially two hours before bedtime. You should dim your lights and could even use your desktop lamp on a warm color setting to use as a night light. To learn more about light's effects on health and well-being, visit the Lighting Research Center website in the link provided. Watch videos in the LRC's video series to learn more about circadian rhythms and circadian stimulus. Find the links in the description below. Interested in helping us conduct a pilot study on the effects of this desk lamp in your workspace? Follow the link to the survey to answer pre- and post questions about if and how the new lighting in your space affected you. If you find these tips to be helpful, send me a photo of your desktop lamp. From all of us here at the LRC, we hope you are well, and we look forward to hearing how lighting may impact you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.